Our world is undergoing an urgent crisis. We aren't talking about war or climate change, but spermageddon. In other words, a global crisis of sperm count. Pardon the pun, but if a seed of fear has not been planted yet, here is some data. Average sperm counts worldwide have halved over the past 50 years. That's right, sperm counts have declined by half in just five decades. And the shift happened more steeply in the past two decades. Scientists say it's a crisis. Governments are panicking. Pop culture is congratulating itself on propagating the term spermageddon. Meanwhile, most of us are confused. Wasn't fertility supposed to be a woman's problem? After all, women are rarely allowed to forget about their biological clocks. The ticking, the starting, the slowing, and God forbid, the stopping. When we talk about population crises the world over, we talk about falling female fertility rates, the drop in births per woman. But what we don't talk about is this. Male infertility forms nearly half of all cases. It affects 7% of the global male population. So, what's causing this crisis? Will it lead to our extinction? Should we be worried? We'll discuss this, but first, let's cover the basics. You probably know that women's fertility peaks at 20. Then it sees a substantial decrease after the age of 35. Men also experience reproductive aging. Those over the age of 40 are about half as fertile as those under 25. This seems quite logical. How did a male fertility crisis sneak up on us? There are two main reasons. One, the fertility decline can be hastened. There are a number of factors that contribute to it. You see, sperms are fascinating cells. They are tiny and highly specialized. Fun fact, they can survive outside the human body. No other cell can do that. So they are tough swimmers, but there is one catch. Seemingly small changes can have a big impact on sperm cells. Scientists point to environmental factors like climate change, heat waves can damage sperm, as can pollution, and microplastics. Then there are lifestyle problems. A lack of exercise can harm sperm count. As can drinking, smoking, poor diet, drug use, and stress. That metal brick in your hand is bad for sperms too. We're talking about smartphones. Using phones more than 20 times a day had a 21% higher risk for low overall sperm count. This sounds overwhelming, but it's not entirely men's fault. Which brings us to reason number two. The second reason contributing to this crisis of male fertility, the lack of research. It may seem like everything is causing a decline in sperm counts, but there is an irony here. Scientists are still not completely sure, because male fertility has been under-researched by scientists, neglected by industry professionals, and in general, ignored by men themselves. So studies on male infertility are often underfunded, that is, if they come under focus, because research usually focuses on female fertility. According to studies, in 25% of the cases of couples with troubles conceiving, the men don't undergo any evaluation at all. So now, experts are calling for action. They are demanding more clinical data, better diagnostic tests, more regulations and policies, and most of all, more awareness. So men don't hear about their fertility just twice in their lives once in schools as a means of prevention, and second, when the crisis has already hit them. Male fertility should be given as much importance as female fertility, 
both to reduce a gendered burden and to solve a crisis of swimmers before the time comes to sink or swim.